Hey there, everyone. I hope you are all doing good. Today, we are going to take a look at the variable Q VCF from Serge by Random Source. I'm doing this video, it's been a while I wanted to do it, to make a full video just about this module, but it's been put on front of the priority since one of my Patreon subscribers started to get into the search thing and he asked me to do a video about it. So if you want to book some videos like this, to change my priorities basically, <laughs> you can uh, book the teaching sessions on Patreon. I'm going to show you all my favorite patches with this module. Also, one thing to note is that the URAC version is actually the same. Uh, maybe there's a bit more headroom due to the different type of power supply uh, running at a higher voltage in 4U than in 3U URAC, but I mean, it's probably very hard to spot the difference. Okay, first thing, I'm going to patch an oscillator into this and we are going to listen to it. So, here we have a low saw wave, which is what I like to use to try filter. We are using the low mode. So let me first run you down to all the things that this filter does. First here it, it's a 12 dB per octave multi-mode filter, meaning that it has a low pass, high pass, band pass, and notch output. All those outputs are available at the same time. So you can do we have mixing fun, which we are going to do later. Then you have the input. Here I've plugged into the in. The in is related to the gain. So you can choose how much signal you are sending into the filter. Let's go back to low pass mode and here the resonance. This is where this filter gets really interesting. It has a very nasal resonance, very liquid. The character of the resonance is highly dependent on the input level. And then start to make things resonate in a very froggy way. And we're only halfway, as you can see. When you pass halfway, resonance starts to take over your input level and to really amplify some harmonics of your signal. hear all the harmonics one by one. It usually gets into a drive territory on some of those harmonics, which can be very pleasing. Okay, let's work on a little sequence so we don't get bored that much. Then you have, so as I said, you have that resonance that can get over the signal. And then you have this AGC input, which is active gain comp... I think it's active, but it's A something, but I think it's active gain compensation input. And this one acts a bit like the classic ladder filter and stuff, where the higher the resonance, the lower the output level. Why is this interesting, would you say? So it, it's because then 
you are safe from the insane saturation and big harmonic boost that this can lead to, which can be handy. It also lets you use that second input here, with, for example, here the square wave of the same oscillator. And this one is not affected by the gain compensation. So, depending on how you blend this and how you set the resonance, you have very different things. This is good, right? Let's make this that sequence a little bit funkier. One of my favorite other stuff to do with this filter is to send step modulation to it. So I'm going to send one of the output of my TKB. Yes. That's just yes. Tiny bit of spring reverb. You're good to go for hours. Uh, I'm going to use, just to show you, that flip-flop circuit over there. I'm going to patch the square wave into it. And at this output, basically it will output one gate, uh, alternate between those two. It will give me a sub-oscillator. So we can have something that's very close to uh, SH-101 or roll and sound with the sub and the saw wave. One thing to note about those two inputs is that if you invert it will be very different. So if I decide that I want my sub at max, I can put it there and then have the saw wave into this input. Yeah, so you can have different flavor. So of course, this is just using the low pass as the high pass. We also don't even use any envelopes on this. So let's, uh, we, don't, we won't bother with the VCA here, we're just going to make... Oh, actually, oh, so you could patch an envelope to this. Uh, we'll trigger this here. And let's send that as we have. So uh, I've used the one volt proactive input to modulate this, but there's also a voltage control of the frequency here with a net generator inverter. Band pass. And yeah, one of the other cool things that we, you can take, like, let's take the low pass out, like this here, and now you can blend between the low pass on one side, the band pass on the other side. I can control that. God, I love this filter. One thing I like to do as well, I'm going to introduce you to the trigger pin. We are going to use this to ping stuff later on. I'm going to set the input level quite low. And I'm going to send some gates from the TKB into the trig in, which will give a little ping to the filter, which adds little accents. Still drops. 
some sort of accent if you want. I like to do this as well directly, like sending gates into this. It's really like a simple filter accent. So you remember that thing we had here? That was we're doing the stepping voltage. Now I'm going to patch it here, which is the voltage control for the resonance. So you can go from no resonance to a lot. So from really like rattling filter to this liquid thing. I like to do it with stepped voltages, but nothing stops you from doing it with like an LFO or something. There's no attenuator on this one, so its voltage will be added. So here I'm at minimum and this will just sweep it to maximum. You need an attenuator in the middle if you want to do something more precise than this. I will put some white noise into the input here. And back to control the resonance. So that's most of the synth oriented stuff, like classic oscillator into the filter. One of the other things that this filter is very good at is ping. Usually you ping a filter by sending a trigger to the input and then play with the resonance and cut off. So you could do that, but to make it easier, we have the trig in, which will basically take any voltage and when it reaches the right level, it will ping the filter internally. So here, for example, so the pings are mostly used with the bandpass. They sound absolutely awesome with spring reverbs. And then when you start to add the resonance, So from there, I'm going to use one row from the TKB to control the resonance. So I can have, this will change the decay of the resulting sound, as you can hear it. Let's use another row in one volt per octave. I often call this filter the King Ping, or the King of Pings, because, come on, even, even without reverb. This is so good. From there, there's no reason why you couldn't add some stuff, or you could add directly some noise inside, which is something I do often. If you want this to be a bit more controllable, you can use a VCA in between your signal and the input. I will control this with another volt step voltage from the TKB. I still have this voltage control input. I would definitely trigger an envelope generator, but not on every step. I'm going to take a few gates from the TKB, trigger an envelope over there, make it very snappy. And this one is going control this so basically this is our pitch so you can have 
very percussive parts added to your signal. You can make awesome kicks with this. Isn't this just awesome? You could also, instead of this, or you could mix it, of course, but just uh, I will just go one by one here. Instead of triggering this as an envelope, I'm going to loop it on itself and use it as a FM source, which give you instant FM plug tones. this or you can all of course start to control this with another step voltage from the TKB. Not because it's supposed to be better with the bandpass that you have to use the bandpass. Okay. Let's see the things. Okay, now I made a very simple and slow sequence. This as an oscillator going into one of the DUSG as a sort of filter, then back into the VCA here. No filter here. And I'll show you why we have this high low thing. When you're on high, the frequency sweep across the human hearing parts of the signal. In low mode, it will start to process signal you can't hear. So basically, control voltage, for example. So if I take my one volt per octave signal, my pitch, and put it into the input. So if I take my one volt per octave and send it to the input here, everything again at max, freak at, freak at max as well, Hop. and back here. Can you hear that little whip? It's because now this is a slew. Because what is a slew? It is just a low pass filter for control voltages. Which means we now have a voltage controlled slew generator. So I can patch another row of the programmer sequencer, send it backwards. And now I can decide how much pitch drift I have on each step. There's slew generators all over in the surge world, so this is not maybe not the best uses for this, but you can do it anyway. Let's plug this back here. You can also use the ping input in that mode to create the trigger input, I mean, to create envelopes. Let me show you that, it's quite fun. Let's send our gate to the trigger input. Let's take the band pass out to the control here. You can hear. There's a little click.
it lets basically it creates a little wiggle that lets that opens that crossfader that we use as a VCA. Now if we add more resonance, it will start to oscillate. Basically the same thing that uh, that we did in audio, but this time it will create control voltages. So basically a sort of one-shot LFO at that frequency with that amplitude and length. So, let's patch it to something different. And we'll send that band pass thing to control the filter, the DWSG that I was using as a filter. To get some instant weirdo wobble bass. You can of course still control of this. One other funny tricks that you can use if you have a system like me with no ring modulator but that you want a ring modulator sound, you can patch that into, let's say, the input here, crossfader, out, here, okay, I have a signal. And you can mold that. So if you plug something to the AGC in, let everything at max, it will just basically invert it. So now we have a voltage control crossfader that goes from one phase to the opposite one, which is, in a sense, a ring modulator. So we could now patch a control into this and have either a tremolo type of thing if we go slow or a ring modulator type of sound. Let's do it with this guy instead. Because it's funnier with triangle waves. This is our carrier and our modulator. I did this funny patch earlier, but I forgot to press record. So, let's go back from the start. So I have a really weird patch going here with it's basically a morphogene playing some mashed up uh, TR-808 samples. And uh, to show you again the ring mod tricks, because I found that it sounds better with um, this kind of sound actually. So here we go. Resonance frex at max. You plug, you melt your signal to the AGC in, low pass out to in number two of this crossfader. So we have on one side the normal signal and on this side the inverted one. And we send that here. Hi. So right now it doesn't make any difference. But now let's plug that modulator triangle wave from the smooth. Now we have a proper rig mod fun stuff. Let's reverb. I like to use ring mod with slow modulator for more of a wiggly tremolo. It can be 
fun to use something where you have control of the shape. Like this, you can make like a ramp. Inverted ramp. Make some weird stuff. Or well, some square wave actually. For the more aggressive. That's well fun. Okay. One of the other things I wanted to show with this. Here we are back with our main signal. I will make a copy of it and put it to the input this time, not the HEC one. I'll take the bandpass, put it there. So here I have my normal signal and here my bandpass filtered one. With the resonance as we've seen with the ping, you can just take the incoming audio and make it resonate to a said frequency. So this can be used in parallel with the dry signal to emphasize some of its some of its part basically. So the resonance will be the length, the decay of the resonance. It will resonate resonate at a given frequency. You can of course modulate this. Better at your rate. Some crunchy stuff. Can be very good just to add a lot of uh, oomph to a snare drum or kick drum. There was a last thing I wanted to show, which is, oh, this one is a bit dangerous. Uh, so it doesn't self-oscillate on its own, but if you take the band pass out and fit it to the input, and let's take the, let's take the band pass actually. Let's put the gain to the minimum. Okay, and you can hear it already. You can make it self-oscillate by this simple feedback patch. It's not very, Oh, it's very loud, that's why I, I was uh, taking care of this. You can kind of choose how hard it is. Also depending on the resonance. So you can have an oscillator with this. So basically, you have a sine wave oscillator with this. Uh, what's more fun? So let's make another type of patch. Now if you switch this to low, it is still self-oscillating but at uh, low speed, which means you have an LFO out of it. The most fun part is that here yeah, I'm taking back that same band pass. On this side I have the modulated one, unmodulated, but if I take the other outputs, they are basically all also self-oscillating, but they are all at a different phase from each other, so you have a quadrature LFO, where all the outputs are shifted. So you can have one speed of modulation, going at four different places and all happening one after the other. Thing you can do with this guy. 
Okay, I will end this presentation by one of my favorite patch. I will use this one again as an oscillator. But back on the first patch, basically. Saw wave here, this to the flip-flop. Flip-flop back here, low pass output. Because I haven't shown you that it talks. It's really fun when it talks. Let's make a clock, clock of this. Some sequence from TKB. Let's use a few gate outs of the TKB. And to this input to make the accent. And then we need triangle or something like this. Like this cycling. Then you have to find the spot. Yes. So this has to go fast for the right modulation. Then you have to find the spot where start. Yeah. To make the Resonance talk. I, I'm completely unattenuated. I could just use the Active Pro as an attenuator there. It's my Surge Acid. Love this patch. Let's just add an envelope. Trigger uh, USG somewhere. I will control this output there. And then let's control. Yeah, I guess this is my favorite search patch. Mix one of the rows of the TKB in there. So on this side I have full on talking FM. On this side only a step modulation. In the middle of both in the middle. Yeah, I will leave you with this. Just for fun, let's add the band pass output there. Watching. Hope you had some fun. I'll make a simple pack of this. I hope it was helpful. And uh, see you next time. Make sure you like, subscribe, check Patreon, and all this. Bye bye. <laughs>